So welcome back and uh, we will continue now this uh, triple integral. So we have already finished evaluation of double integrals and many other applications of double integral. Today we will learn about the triple integrals. So basically the evaluation part uh, we will uh, look into uh, in this lecture. So first how to how to define uh, this triple integral. So, we need to similar to what we have done for the double integrals, we will divide the given region. So, now our region will be a three dimensional in the three dimensional um, space. So, we will divide that region into n sub regions and we call uh, the volume of these uh, sub regions by this delta v 1, delta v 2, delta v n. So, we have a three dimensional space now and we have divided that into small uh, regions and for each region we are denoting its volume by this delta v 1, delta v 2 and delta v, v n. And now we let a point x j, y j and z j an arbitrary point in jth sub region. So, it is uh, very similar to what we have done in case of two dimensional, we have uh, divided the domain, the two dimensional do domain into small uh, sections, small cells and then in each cell we had taken a point and the corresponding uh, value of the function uh, at that point was multiplied by the area and that was summed up and taking the limit of that sum we uh, introduce the double integral. So, here as well, so we will uh, consider this sum now. So, sum over this all the volumes delta v j multiplied by the function value. So, the function value at uh, this point x j y j z j which we have considered in, in j th sub region and we are adding all these regions or this multiplication over this all regions that means this j is varying from 0 to n. And now, if we take the limit here as n goes to infinity or other way around that this delta v j will go to 0 because the domain is fixed now. So, if we are letting this n goes to infinity, then the uh, sub regions will go to uh, infinity, uh, infinity that means the volume of each sub region will go to uh, 0. So, taking if this limit exists as n approaches to infinity, in that case we call this as an integral and the notation for this integral in the three dimensional case or for the triple integral we use uh, this notation. So, we have now the three symbols for this integral, integral over that volume here which uh, is a space uh, in or region in the three dimensional plane. Then we have the function here f x y z uh, integrating over that volume uh, in a space and then the definition is coming again from the sum when we have added this f with this delta v j and uh, at the end taking this limit as n approaches to infinity. So, again the physical interpretation if we want to take a quick look. So, if for example, this f is set to be 1. So, that means there is no f here. So, we are basically adding this delta v j the volume of each uh, each sub region and then taking the limit. So, by considering this f as 1, we will get nothing but the volume of that sub region again. So, using the uh, double integral also we have computed the volume uh, that was uh, one of the applications of the of the double integral, but in that case we consider that f in the integrand. So, the double integral with that integrand that surface and was giving us the volume, but now in this case when we set this f to 1, then we are getting actually the volume of, of this domain there, uh, the domain of the integration which is denoted by v in this case. And we had also the application there finding the area of the domain in case of the second uh, in case of the double integral and there also precisely we have set this function to 1 and just integrating without this function we were getting the, the area of the 
uh, domain of integrations. And in, in this case, when we set this f to one, we will get the volume of the uh, of the domain because now we have a, a three we have a volume in this three dimensional uh, space. So it represents the volume if we set f is equal to one. So that also we can look into as uh, as one of the applications of the of the triple integral. So, how to evaluate the triple integral? So, having the knowledge of the evaluation of the double integral, this will be also easier. So, this is the idea of this uh, uh, iterative uh, computation of uh, single integrals and then uh, so like for instance, if we consider that is the most general uh, form is given. So, this is the innermost inner one uh, inter in integral this is taken with respect to x. So, the limits for this x in, in, in a very general case can be a function of this y and z to the function f 2 there y and z. So, as a result when we integrate the inner one we will get some uh, function because over x we have integrated. So, we will not uh, see x anymore, but the limits can be here the function of y z here can be the function of y z and then uh, we will have also the y z in the integrand. So, in general the in after evaluation of the inner integral we will get a function of y and z. So, then once having done the evaluation of the inner integral we will go to the outer one now uh, with respect to y. So, we are integrating now with respect to y and the limits of the y can be the function of z can be the function of z. So, after the integration of this uh, second uh, inner integral we will get uh, some function of z and now at the end we will integrate uh, this x z with respect to z and now the limit has to be constant because always remember the value of this integral is is a is a constant and you will not see uh, anything uh, of x y and z because we are integrating over over the volume this v uh, or over all the points this x y z in our volume so at the end uh, this will be free this integral value will not have anything of uh, x y z so once we have uh, the evaluation of the inner two integral that we are getting like a function of z and now we will integrate with respect to z. So, for the outer integral now the limits must be constant. So, this is a general consideration which we should always keep in mind while putting the limits of the of the integral. So, the inner one when we are uh, integrating with respect to x the limits can be the function of y and z both the limits the lower and the upper one. After this integration the x is removed we have the function of variable uh, y and z and then we are integrating with respect to y the limits still can be the function of z uh, like here psi 1 z and psi, psi 2 z. So, these limits can be the function of z and the outer one then uh, that has to be the constant limits for z and now we will get a value of this integral which is free from this x y n z. So, this structure we uh, must keep in mind and then similar to uh, the double integrals the order of integration is is immaterial if the limits of the integration are, are constant. So, similar to double integral similar to double integrals the order of the integration is immaterial if the limits of the integration uh, are constants. So, if we are working with the constant limits for instance here uh, the limits of x are e to f these are the constants y is c to d and z is a to b. So, if these limits are constant then we do not have to worry about the order of the integration and simply we can change this order here. So, x y z is now z y and x and now the limits of z will be a to b because in this integral here the limits of the of z was uh, a to b. So, here also the z will be from a to b. Similarly, the limit of y 
c to d here also the limits of y c to d and then the outer one is the limit of x. So, here the e to f. So, here also we have e to f. So, simply we can change the order if the if the if the range here of integration or the limits of integration is uh, or are constant. Also, we can further change like the order d h d z d x d y and the corresponding limits will again sit over the integrals. Once we have the functions here as above in, in a very general case, then we have to be or it is more difficult uh, to change the order of integration and we have to be very careful now once we change the order similar to what we have done in, in case of two variables. Once we change the order again we need to be very careful about the uh, finding the limits of the integration if these limits are not constant. If the limits are constant one can simply uh, change the order. Okay, so, here now we will go for the evaluation. So, that is the first uh, example we will consider <coughs> the exponential function e power x plus y plus z the, the very simple function and we want to integrate uh, with respect to z y and then x. So, the inner one is with respect to z the limits 0 to x plus y and for y the limits are given as uh, 0 to x and for x the limits are given as 0 to a. So, if you want to um, integrate this, so first we need to integrate with respect to z. So, with respect to z when we integrate this function e power x plus y plus z. So, naturally this x plus y will be treated as constant and we can integrate this. So, the integral of the e power x plus y plus z will be again the exponential function e power x plus y plus z and there is no factor or anything sitting with the z. So, the integral of this will be the same function exponential function e power x plus y plus z and we have to put now the limits. So, the lower limit is 0, the upper limit is x plus y. We can substitute that. So, once we put this limit of z x plus y, so we will get this 2 times x plus y, x plus y was already there then z is substituted as x plus y. So, we are getting exponential power 2 times of uh, x plus y and minus uh, the lower limit. So, z is set to be 0. So, we will get e power 2 times this x plus y minus the z is set to be 0 and we get e power uh, x plus y and now we have uh, only the two integrals left with respect to y and then with respect to x. So, now we will solve for with respect to y the order has to be the same uh, we cannot uh, integrate for example, first with respect to x because uh, we have the x in the integrand we have also the x sitting in the, the limits. Same here we have to do it first with respect to z only because the z the integrand contains x and y also the limit contains x and y. So, after this integration of the inner one we got uh, the function of this x and y e power 2 times x plus y minus e power x plus y. So, the order has to be uh, the same here first the inner one then the outer and so on in the sequence. So, here when we get this function of x and y we, we can integrate now with respect to y. So, the integral of this with respect to y. So, e power 2 times now we have the 2 here 2 times x plus y. So, the 2 will go to the denominator here the limits 0 to y now the, uh, the outer integral d x minus 0 to a this integral and the integral of this e power x plus y which is again e power x plus y and the limits of the inner integral this here 0 to x. So, we can substitute now the above limit here with rest here y will be replaced for x. So, we will have 2 x and then uh, we have 2 there. So, we will get this 4 x the so exponential 4 x with the half factor already there and then we will put y 0. So, we will get 2 x. So, this the integral will give us e power 4 x minus e power 2 x. From here again we will get e power 2 x and minus uh, e power x. So, this minus sign 
and this half we have taken uh, common from both the terms. So, we are uh, mixing now these two integrals here uh, to 1. So, this 2 factor will come because we have taken this half outside the integral. So, this 2 will come there and e power 2 x minus e power x. So, that is the integrand now which we can simplify. So, this is e power 4 x and these 2 uh, will give uh, minus uh, 3 uh, e power 2 x and then we have here minus minus plus. So, this is e power uh, 2 x. So, 2 e power 2 e power x. So, this again very simple to integrate which uh, we will get e exponential here uh, this 4 x. So, again let me just uh, evaluate little bit. So, here we have e power 4 x. So, this integral will give uh, e power 4 x over 4. The second one we have the 3 e power 2 x by 2 and here we have 2 and exponential x. Then we have the limit 0 to uh, a, the limit 0 to a and this half factor is, is also sitting there. So, half. Now, this half and when we put a there, so e power 4 a by this 4 minus 3 by 2 e power 2 a and then we have 2 e power a as it is. Then with the minus sign the 0 will put this 1 over 4 and here uh, again the 0 will give 1. So, 3 by 2 and here this will be minus uh, 2. So, and this is precisely what we have here e power 4 a by 8 and minus 3 by 4. So, 2 to 4 here we have e power 2 a and this 2 with this half. So, we get e power a here and uh, once we uh, make this calculation. So, this is 4 then we have minus 1 then 6 and minus 8. So, uh, we are getting minus 3 by 4 and this 1 by 2 is there. So, minus 3 by 8. So, that is the evaluation of this uh, simple integral. So, we have to again iteratively uh, solve the integrals like uh, and then these becomes uh, a single integral. So, first with respect to z then with respect to y and at the end with respect to x. So, next we have this problem 2 where we will evaluate uh, this integral and this r the region r is given uh, bounded by this x is equal to 0. Uh, so, y is equal to 0 line and z is equal to 0 line or basically these are the planes now. So, we are talking about the three dimensional uh, space. So, this x is equal to 0 is the y z plane here this y is equal to 0 is the x z plane and this is x y plane and we have another plane here x plus y plus z is equal to 1. So, this is cutting at this x axis by 1 and also at, at z uh, again at 1 and uh, x again at 1. So, we have this slanted plane here and we have these three uh, coordinate uh, planes x is equal to 0, y is equal to 0 and z is equal to 0. So, this is the situation the x axis, y axis and z axis and then we have uh, this plane which is given by this x plus y uh, plus uh, z is equal to 1. That is this plane given by this. So, we have the four planes, the three uh, standard coordinate planes and then we have the one this uh, plane x plus y uh, plus z is equal to 1. So, now we have to fix the limit for this region r and the r is the bounded by these three, three planes. So, putting the limits now, so we have the integrand 1 over x plus y plus z uh, plus 1 power 3 with let us fix first with respect to z then with respect to y and then with respect to x. We can change the order also and accordingly the limits will change. 
So, with respect to z now, so in the direction of z, so we have the x axis and we have the y axis and then we have the z axis and there is a plane here uh, x is equal to y uh, x plus y plus z is equal to 1. So, now in the direction of y we are fixing first. So, we are going always from z is equal to 0, we are entering this uh, 3 dimensional space and we are exiting through this uh, plane here x plus y plus z is equal to 1. So, this x plus y plus z is equal to 1. So, from here we can get the z. So, 1 minus x minus y. So, we are entering into this uh, 3 dimensional space this volume through this z is equal to 0 because that is the plane uh, uh, we have as the x y plane. So, we are entering through this x y plane and then leaving the domain always from this uh, plane which is given by x plus y plus z is equal to 1. So, that means, there z is 1 minus x minus y. So, for the limits of this z, for the limits of z we have z is equal to 0 to this z is equal to 1 minus x and minus y. So, the limits of z are fixed now. So, now what we have to do, we have to project this now in the x y plane, the our, uh, our volume we need to project now in the x y plane, because in the z axis along the z axis we have computed the limits. So, z goes from 0 to uh, 1 minus x minus y and now if we project this in the x y plane. So, what we will get, so if the, we have the x axis here, we have the y axis then this will be the projection. This is cutting at x is equal to 1, here also at y is equal to 1. So, this is now the projection in this uh, x y plane. So, we need to now fix only the limits here for x and y. This equation of this line will be just setting this z to 0. So, we have x plus y is equal to 1. So, this is the projection now and we can easily because now we are in the two dimensional case and we know how to fix the limit. So, the limits of the y now will be, so y for y we are now entering into this domain here the projected domain from y is equal to 0 and we are leaving to y is equal to 1 minus x. So, the limits of y are also clear from y is equal to 0 and leaving the domain to uh, y is equal to 1 minus x there. And now, what is left? It is for x. So, naturally again we can project everything to the x axis that is another way of looking at. So, if we project now this again to the x axis, we will get simply uh, this 0 to 1, this line uh, segment over, over the x axis from 0 to 1. So, for the x part, or for the limits of x will be now from 0 to 1. So, the most difficult part for in this three dimensional computation will be always this finding the limits. The trick is for the inner one for the z we have to look into the whole uh, this three dimensional uh, volume and see that with respect to z where we are entering the domain and at what point we are. Uh, it, at which surface we are exiting this uh, volume. So, in this case it was rather simple the surface where it enters that was the x y plane that means the z was 0 there. So, it is entering to this volume from the z is equal to 0 and the exit point from this uh, volume along this a, uh, z axis was this plane z x plus y plus z is equal to 1 or uh, z is equal to 1 minus x minus y. So, the fixing the limits of the z was trivial in this particular case that z goes from 0 and it leaves at z is equal to 1 minus x minus y. Once we have fixed the limits for y or for z, now we can project our, our this domain of uh, integration to the uh, x y plane because for z we have fixed already. So, now we will project to the x y plane while projecting this volume here to x y plane we will get this uh, triangle nothing else but this triangle which cut uh, here at x is equal to 1 and at y is equal to 1 in along this x and y axis. And now in this two dimensional we, we, we know how to fix the limit. So, in this case 
for the limits of this y we have from 0 to uh, to this line which is 1 minus uh, x and outer integral the x was then uh, left from uh, 0 to 1 which is given here. So, having this limits now we can easily compute because this is 1 over x plus y plus z plus 1 uh, power this 3 here and which we can integrate. So, we will get minus power uh, 2 and this 0 to 1 minus x and minus y. So, this is the integral we want to uh, evaluate now. So, this uh, when once we put the upper limit here uh, with respect to uh, z. So, what we will get this minus 1 by 2 will be uh, outside here. So, when we put z is equal to 1 minus x minus y. So, y and x will cancel and this one will add. So, we will have 2 power minus 2 and then minus this z will be set to 0. So, we will have x plus y and plus 1 power minus 2 and then we will have the dy and this dx, dy and dx there and the outer this integral 0 to 1 and 0 to 1 minus x. So, we can simplify further. So, we have 0 to 1 and 0 to 1 minus x with this minus half there and this will be uh, 1 by 4 and this will be uh, 1 over this x plus y uh, plus 1 minus 2 or uh, then plus 2 there in the denominator and then dy in dx. Now, with respect to y we need to integrate. So, here in this place we will get 0 to 1, 1 by 4 and with respect to y. So, this will be just y and when we put the limit. So, we will get uh, 1 by 4 and this 1 minus x here and with minus sign. So, we need to integrate first this one. So, we will get minus 2 and this plus 1. So, we will get 1 over uh, this x plus y uh, plus 1 minus 2 and plus 1. So, this will be also with the plus sign and then uh, these uh, here we have already substituted the limit. So, in this case we have to put these limits for y 0 to 1 minus x and then everything will be integrated over x. So, by putting these limits here 1 minus x for y. So, we will get this uh, again this 1 by 2 here and then when putting this limit 0 we will get x plus 1 and that will give us the uh, integration with respect to x in terms of the, the logarithmic. So, this evaluation is again simple with respect to x we can do that and the answer to this uh, calculation will be 1 by 2 the log with base e naturally here uh, 2 which will be coming out of this integral here and the rest here the 5 by 8. The last problem, so using this triple integral we want to find the volume which is common to this is sphere. We have this sphere x square plus y square plus z square is equal to a square and this circular cylinder uh, which is given by x square plus y square is equal to a square. So, this is again the circle which we have discussed uh, a couple of times before. This is a shifted circle where radius uh, is a by 2 and the center is a by 2 and 0 like shown here in the in this figure. So, the cylinder here whose uh, projection on the x y plane is given by the circle and the center here is a by 2 and 0. So, the volume if you want to find uh, using this uh, triple integral. So, obviously, there will be no no integrand now and we have this uh, integral over this uh, v which is uh, given by the cylinder and then we have the sphere. So, the sphere is, is, is uh, the cylinder is cutting the sphere and that portion we want to find the volume. So, the most important part again here is finding this uh, limit for this v and what we do now first with respect to z again we, we are putting. So, in the direction of z let us take the the 4 the multiplication of 4 and we will just uh, consider only the upper half uh, of this uh, cylinder. 
So, we will make the double to get the, the lower portion as well and then since we have the sphere, so again there are two portions, one the upper one and the lower one. So, overall if we just consider this upper half here, then we have to multiply by, by 4 to get the whole uh, volume because this will give us the half volume because we are integrating in the half and that to upper half. So, it will be one fourth of the total volume. So, we have to multiply by 4 here the limits. Now, we have to fix the limits. So, for the z, so this is the cylinder which is uh, in the direction of z and uh, it is cutting exactly the sphere there. So, the, for the limits of z for this upper, uh, upper half uh, portion will be we are entering into the z from z is equal to 0 and we are leaving this to the sphere. So, on the sphere here because uh, the cylinder cuts that sphere and our interest is to get this uh, common uh, volume. So, we are exiting the domain through this sphere where the equation is a square minus x square minus y square for this z in the upper half uh, portion. So, the limits for the z are clear now from 0 to that is sphere because we are leaving that domain to that sphere. And now, uh, this z direction is, is done and we can now project this to, to this x y plane and this is precisely the projection here. So, we have to now uh, do the limits over this semicircle circular disc. So, in this case now the y, y uh, enters through this 0 here and leave this to the circle. So, y goes from 0 to that circle because the circle uh, equation was this x square plus y square is equal to a x. So, from here we can get a x and minus x square and then the square root. So, this is the upper limit and now for the a we are moving from 0 to this a. So, for this x 0 to a. So, again the limits were not difficult in this particular case only thing we have to be careful for the z limit because in case of the z we are entering through this x y plane, but we are leaving through this uh, sphere there in the direction of z. Having this, once we uh, set the limits for the z, we project that uh, this common volume to the x y plane and that will be precisely the semicircular disk. Uh, for our consideration and the limits for this we have we can easily uh, set here. So, now we need to just uh, do this evaluation here for this integral and we uh, can do for the in, uh, inner one first with respect to z. So, that will be z and then the upper limit. So, square root a square minus x square y square dy dx and now this is the double integral which we uh, are well familiar with. So, we can easily evaluate this integral. Indeed, changing to the polar coordinate would be much easier because we do see here x square y square and also uh, this circle which is uh, given already and we know the polar equation of that circle also that will be r is equal to a cos theta. So, that will be the circle here uh, r is equal to a cos theta. So, if we put into this uh, polar coordinate then this will be easier because r is from 0 to this a cos theta to the circle and theta will be from 0 to this pi by 2. So, having this in polar coordinate the evaluation will become easier and we have done already similar evaluation before. So, to evaluate this we will change to the polar coordinate the r will go from 0 to this circle. So, from 0 and to this circle here. So, r is equal to 0 and r is equal to this a cos theta that is the limit for this r and then for theta we have 0 to pi by 2 and this 4 to get that complete volume. And we have a square minus this r square. So, for x square y square we have r square and r dr d theta. So, this we can again this is a simple uh, well known function which we can uh, integrate because r is already given there and then we can put the lower and the upper limits. So, we will get in this case this sign cube theta minus 1 and d theta with the factor of minus 4 by 3 a cube. 
but we know this identity here that sin 3 theta is 3 sin theta minus 4 sin cube theta. So, this sin cube theta we can write down in terms of sin 3 theta and sin theta which are uh, easy to integrate we can integrate sin theta we can also integrate uh, sin 3 theta. So, this sin cube theta we can convert from this identity in terms of this sin 3 theta and sin theta and uh, after this evaluation of the single integral we will get 2 by 3 a cube and pi minus this 4 by 3. So, the conclusion here we have gone through the the simple the basic evaluation of the triple integrals and what was the most difficult part was fixing the limit and uh, the trick he here is that first we will fix uh, the limit for instance of the z we can do with x or y as well, but fixing the limit for the z we have to see that where we are entering the whole volume and at what point at what surface we are exiting the the volume. So, that will be the the limit for this uh, direction the z for instance and once we fix this with respect to 1 we can project uh, the whole uh, volume to the other uh, plane. So, if we have fixed already with respect to z then we can project uh, the geometry the volume to the x y plane and once we project to the x y plane we are in the two dimensions and we know how to fix the limit for two dimensional case. So, these are the references we have used for preparing the lectures and thank you very much.